Hello guys and welcome to this new video. I was finally able to work a little bit on my vector warp macro and with some help from Alexi from the Pirates of Confusion Discord I was able to finally wrap it up. Alexi helped a lot uh, with the automation of the macro. He made some awesome scripting for it so Alexi thanks a lot for it. If you want to know more about how the macro works under the hood, I made a video about that and I will leave the link in the description. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing that you want to do is to load the macro into the flow and pipe in your footage. The first thing is to decide whether your source of the vectors is going to be internal or external. What does it mean? If you don't have vectors for your footage, you either want to create an optical flow uh, node inside of your flow or use the one that's, that's inside the macro and uh, you will be able to access both the classic method and the advanced one overall the classic method is going to give you um, better results but it's going to be also very slow the advanced uh, can be a good compromise in terms of quality it's not going to be as good as the classic method but the speed is very much faster so um, if you don't have uh, vectors uh, calculated previously you're going to choose internal if you have you will want to, to uh, pipe those vectors in here and select external so then after that all you have to do is to select a reference frame suitable for uh, your needs so for example in this case I think I'm going to choose something like for example like this because I'm going to add a logo on her shirt and I'm going to just uh, click this button to set the reference frame uh, once that I uh, set the reference frame uh, I want to select my vector warp and click generate the ST map and you're welcomed with a warning that says please set the comp to proceed and uh, you want to do that and that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to add a oh see I already have one a demo uh, you know I've been re rehearsing so yeah I'm going to save uh, this uh, as a demo comp here and I'm going to save the uh, ST map uh, this the this is the ST map by the way right so um, if you have more than one vector warp in the comp you may want to first go into the file tab and create your custom folder in here and use that both for the loader and the saver and then you want to click generate the ST map. Be sure that uh, the depth in the load section is set to 32 bit. If you click the generate ST map after you set your path, the uh, depth is going to be set to 32 bit float automatically. All right, so uh, once you generated the ST map, what you want to do is basically to analyze, and for that, you have a bunch of buttons which uh, will do backward and forward or forward and backward and that's what I'm going to do in this case of course you want to have the macro selected when you're doing any of those operation keep that in mind once it's done analyzing forward it will automatically go back to the reference frame and analyze backward and when it's done the macro will go back to the reference frame and stop. Now what, what you have to do is simply to add uh, one node which is going to be the ST mapper. This is a fuse uh, by Jacob Danel. If you don't have it you can find it on Reactor. Be sure to donate to Jacob because he's doing awesome tools for the community. Uh, so yeah, basically what you want to do is to pipe the uh, footage into the ST mapper uh, and then you want to merge that one on top of the uh, original footage. Maybe now I'm going to add a transform node and basically 
I just want to uh, scale my logo and yeah I want to place that on the t-shirt as you can see it's already uh, sticking to the shirt itself I mean it's not perfect as you can see there is some harshness in this warping remember that what you can do is just to add a blur node after the vector warp and with some blurring you can uh, remove that harshness and basically get an almost perfect result just uh, let me just make it a little bit more nice and for that I'm going to add a brightness contrast since I'm going uh, since I'm w working in float I can set this uh, to uh, um, 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 to overlay and thank thanks to the power of float I can use the brightness maybe I want to pre-divide and post multiply and the lift here with maybe a just a touch of uh, gain to basically you know have a nice uh, composite uh, all together right so uh, something that you want to know about this is that you also have another output uh, for the vector warp and this one in this to this one you can uh, connect a save a saver node and uh, with this you're uh, basically sending out the vectors from that you get from this analysis here so for example if you're using the classic mode you may want to also save those vectors out so that if uh, for whatever reason something something goes bad uh, with the for example the reference frame uh, you can redo the accumulation without uh, calculating the vectors every time so keep that in mind and we also have this other input which is for the mat and I'm going to show you how that works uh, right now all right so let's uh, move to this comp here and as you can see I have uh, this footage and let's say I want to place something in here where you know um, right here where the girl is swinging basically and for doing that what I have to do is to basically uh, you know animate a roto uh, around uh, the thing that I want to remove from my analysis and let me create another vector warp just for ease and let me pipe in the mat into here this one is the mat input and I want to go into the mat tab click use mat and view the vectors as you can see if uh, let me show you what I have here as you can see here I have those vectors that are for the little girls winging if I basically uh, move this uh, mat uh, down here I'm uh, filling in those vectors with the ones running it once you have the uh, use mat and your um, mask piped in all you have to do is to switch back to stmap and proceed as I showed you before so for example here I have this text in let me show you I have this text in here which I want to map on the floor and yeah as you can see the result is pretty pretty good and as you can see the vector warp is ignoring the uh, little girl swinging all right so uh, what else can you do with uh, the vector warp macro for those who have been watching me for a while maybe they do remember that the uh, previous vector warp macro had a warp and stabilize mode which didn't really work uh, as as it should it wasn't really uh, precise but yeah Jacob came up with this awesome invert stmap fuse which you know is still in beta but it works awesome and 
you can find it on Wisaclass. I will leave the link in the description as well. Let me show you what this does. For example, in this comp, what I want to do is to remove this cat tattoo from her back. And what I can do is basically, let me go back to the reference frame. I can pipe it into the inverse ST map and I can pipe the original footage. And the amazing thing that the inverse ST map does is no matter what frame you're on the timeline, even if, for example, this is the original frame, it will warp the uh, image to this state, which is similar to our reference frame. And if you think about that, this is pretty huge, it's pretty useful. So, for example, what I can do is I can um, create a polygon around the... Um, let me go back to the reference frame. I can draw a polygon around the cat here and um, basically I can uh, grow the edges using a clean plate and I can use my spot remover macro to fill in some texture and if I cut that out from the uh, a stabilized workflow, I can reverse the stabilization using an ST mapper. So uh, let me show you the result. And uh, as you can see, uh, it is pretty awesome because uh, since I'm not using a hold frame, the uh, lighting and everything is staying consistent for the whole shot. Just let me give you one more example here. So let's say I have uh, this shot here and I want to do some beauty so for example I want to you know uh, remove some of these uh, imperfections in her on her face I can uh, put in a vector warp and invert my ST map so let me disable this uh, brightness contrast for a moment and let me go back to the reference frame I can, uh, sorry, I can paint out those imperfections and I can, you know, use another ST map to warp them on the original footage and I can create a mask which I'm going to uh, again warp using the same uh, ST map uh, sequence that I generated with the vector warp and use that as you can see I'm not using no keyframe at all so this is just this single frame being warped with the ST mapper I can get this awesome result by just painting out one single frame let me uh, give you a AB comparison and let me show what we are talking about. I mean, this is pretty awesome, in my opinion. I mean, it's not perfect, but I didn't spend so much time on it. I could perfect it a little bit more. And I'm pretty sure that, um, you know, in this case, one single vector warp was enough. But if you, if you have more complex movement of uh, someone's face, you could, you know, uh, use more than ve one vector warp to basically uh, concatenate more than one uh, steel frame uh, for, you know, uh, the warping and painting and stuff. All right, so uh, yeah, I think this is pretty much it. There's not much uh, else uh, to show in the vector warp. Um, one more thing is, uh, you know, in the control you have here, you have a quick guide that, that uh, you know, it's a, sum um, a summary of what I've been uh, telling you uh, in this video. And of course, if you click this tutorial button, you will be brought here to this video anyway hope you like this one and you know uh, go grab this uh, macro and let me know what you think again thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one bye bye